Welcome to this short and crisp webinar. You are going to get crystal clear clarity in this very short duration and that's my assurance. Before we get into the presentation, let me just take a couple of minutes to introduce myself. I am CA N Raja, Chartered Accountant by Qualification, a teacher, trainer by passion. I started my career in banking industry through State Bank of India, joined as credit analyst, in short period elevated as team leader, credit processing, had opportunity to work on 250 plus projects, it's 5000 crore plus size. After four years of stint in State Bank of India, I moved to CA practice, had my practice for seven and a half years parallelly took teaching assignments, started teaching financial management, strategic financial management for CA, CMA and CA students. I'm also an M-Panel trainer with leading private sector bank for training their executives on financial analysis, working capital and project finance. Thanks to technology, today I teach 2 lakh plus students all over the world through my structured online courses and it's because of the same technology you are also attending this mini webinar now. One more thing, if you don't have your notepad and pen, please pass the screen, go and take notepad and pen because you are going to have lot many key points to make note of in this session. Let's get into the presentation. Let's calculate some key financial ratios from this balance sheet and P&L and that will give lot of information. First, let's look at what is the movement in revenue. Okay, let's try to put that here. I have captured the revenue from operations and uh, what is the fall? The dip is so much, it's like 2849 crore. So if I express that in percentage, there is 17.58 percentage drop in sales. Let's just capture that. Fine. Number two, let's understand what is the profit margin here. To calculate profit margin, we need profit after tax. It is 698.89 crore in 2020 and 368.81 in 2021. So again, what we could see is a drop, but let's measure this profit margin. Profit margin is nothing but this profit after tax divided by this revenue from operations and it is 2.76% in 2021 whereas it was 4.31 in 2020. So what are the reasons? Uh, we have seen one, there is a drop in sale. There is drop in sales. Then we have also seen that there are some exceptional items, but there can also be other factors because we have to see what is this purchases cost with reference to revenue from operations. Was it at the same level? What about this employee benefit cost? whether in terms of proportion it has increased or decreased, finance cost, okay, all this will contribute. But uh, what is uh, very glaringly visible is a drop in sale and to this exceptional items. Next, let us also look into EBITDA. So this is basically earnings before interest, depreciation and taxes. So here we have earnings before tax, okay. With this, we have to add interest cost we should also add depreciation and amortization. So here we have the finance cost. I I mean for this discussion purpose, I assume this entire finance cost has interest cost and depreciation. Okay, so let us uh, do that. My profit before taxes, before taxes. Okay, so here also we have two items, profit before tax and profit before exceptional items and taxes. See, these kind of exceptional items are not expected to recur. Okay, so this is what they are ideally doing. These exceptional items comes into picture. In the previous year, they had positive. In the current year, it is negative. So let us take profit before exceptional items and tax, which is 768.11 and 654.21. In order to arrive at EBITDA, we have to add items, right? So this is what? This is profit before exceptional items and taxes. With this, let us add depreciation and amortization. And that is 121.51. And the other one is 120.97. Okay. And we should also add interest. We have it as finance cost here which is 505.93 and 
and 381.01. So if we add all this, we'll get our EBITDA and this EBITDA can be compared with uh, many things. Okay. Why EBITDA is important because see, this is the profit this business is actually generating. After that, if it is getting reduced, that can be because of uh, items which are beyond control, that is exceptional items and it can be on account of taxes. It can be on account of uh, capital structuring. Okay. But this business is capable of earning so much. That's what EBITDA communicates. Now we can also calculate this EBITDA margin by comparing it with sales. Let me take this. I'll compare it with the revenue from operations and EBITDA margin here it is 10.45% in the previous year it is 7.13 percent. See here it is communicating something uh, different. On look we were under the impression that uh, turnover has come down. On look we were under the impression that the profits have come down right because we said uh, the previous year it was uh, 969 but in the current year it is uh, only triple five but uh, already it got demonstrated here. The previous year it was 654 profit before exceptional items and in the current year it was 768 and in terms of percentage that is established even more finer by computing this EBITDA percentage. We compared the EBITDA with the sales okay and it is 10.45 percentage in the current year whereas in the previous year it is only 7.13 percentage. So what we have uh, computed now is one is the profit margin and the other one is EBITDA margin. Then we have to relate many items in the statement of profit and loss with balance sheet and that will give us a lot more information. Let's uh, see what are the other things. See basically we have to understand the solvency position of the business, both the short term solvency and long term solvency. See these are all fundamentals. There are many other uh, ratios, many other indicators available. We have to go deeper and deeper, but uh, whatever I've shown so far and the other two or three, what we are going to discuss are like fundamental pillars of any business. If they are fundamentally strong, then uh, most of the other ratios will also be strong. But if these fundamental ratios are weak, then you can take it for granted. Others will also be weak, right? So let's look at this balance sheet. Let me make this little bigger. Yeah, let's try to understand their uh, short term solvency. What we'll do, we'll take this uh, current liability, we'll compare it with current assets. Okay, what I have done now is I have captured their current assets, current liabilities, so that we can understand their short term solvency position. So this is their current assets and current liabilities. Let us also compute the difference between these two. We call it as networking capital and we'll calculate current ratio now. Current ratio is nothing but current asset divided by current liability. It is 1.08. In the previous year, it is 1.02. So actually, their liquidity position, it appears as it has improved marginally because from 1.02, it has improved to 1.08. And that is also evident by looking at this networking capital. That is in the previous year, long term funds contributed for a creator. Current assets is only 146.1 crore, whereas in the current year, it is 618.17 crore. That is the contribution of long term funds for creating this current assets. It means if on demand liability arises, it will arise only to the extent of 7,431. Still, they'll be left with 618. But here, they'll be left only with 146 crore. Look, despite having 9,131 crore of current asset, if all current liabilities are demanded immediately, they'll be left with only 146 crore. But here, current asset composition has come down. But even now, if all the current liabilities are demanded, still they'll be left with 618.17 crore that will be available for 
further circulation okay that's about short term solvency uh, i mean we can't say that uh, it is uh, liquidity is uh, very highly comfortable and all because uh, through our uh, earlier sessions we have understood that uh, if a business is having a current ratio of 1.33 then yes they have a good uh, uh, comfortable liquidity position i mean not just 1.33 greater than 1.33 but it should not go beyond uh, 2 is to 1 and all then that could uh, lead to idle resources but uh, below 1.33 means there is always a scope for uh, tweaking or making corrections so that they can make it to the level of 1.33 okay so that's about short term solvency let us also look into their fundamental uh, long term solvency for that information required us we should see what is their total equity basically the tangible net worth then that should be compared with uh, total liabilities so here if you see their total liabilities yeah this is the value this is their total liabilities and that should be compared with this equity and if there are any uh, intangible assets we have to knock them off intangible assets and uh, any investments look at here under non current assets uh, they have investments in properties that's fine but they have made some financial investments and if those financial investments are uh, mainly like in uh, subsidies associates uh, that has to be fa factored okay so how this works is you have to capture the total outside liabilities then compare that with tangible net worth so when we say tangible net worth automatically it uh, excludes intangible assets so let's capture the total outside liabilities now so i have captured total outside liabilities next we should find out what is your tangible net worth here we have the equity as 4127.99 and 3761.00 this is their note 3 basically the fixed asset schedule and uh, here you will see this intangible asset their intangible assets are basically the computer software and mind development rights and uh, what we'll do we'll remove this computer software whereas this mind development rights uh, since it can be transferred to some other person it will fetch even in the event of uh, liquidation so what we'll do we'll just remove this value that is 11.49 crore from equity we should also know what is the corresponding value in the previous year right previous year total net carrying amount was 15.68 crore let's do that 15.68 previous year 11.49 current year we have to see whether there are any revaluation reserves if yes that should also be deducted while computing this tangible net worth so i checked uh, their schedule 20 which deals with reserves they have general reserve securities premium and retained earnings okay so there is no revaluation reserve next what we have to see is whether there are any investment in subsidiaries associates but here one point i'll tell you while computing this tangible net worth what we'll do is we'll take equity we'll reduce intangible assets will reduce revaluation reserves the further reduction of uh, investment in subsidiary associates then loans and advances to subsidiary related companies everything will come under adjusted tangible net worth okay so now i am just doing the basic tangible net worth computation so i am not uh, getting into the deduction and all but as per their note 6 non current assets they have various investments they have investments in jointly controlled entities associate companies uh, they have investment in debentures of uh, subsidiary companies also llps llps and there are unquoted investments as well so now let us compute the tangible net worth which is so much for 2021 and this is for 2020 okay 
So I'll bring that here. Now we can compute TOL by TNW ratio. That is basically the overall liabilities by tangible net worth. In 2021, it is 2.15 and in 2020, it is 2.7. It means it has actually improved. Improved over the previous year on account of uh, two reasons. One, tangible net worth has improved when compared with the previous year. Two, overall outside liabilities has come down. Okay. So in this video, what we have seen is the movement in sales, the profit margin, EBITDA margin, short term solvency current ratio and long term solvency TOL by TNW. Thank you so much. We have come to the end of this webinar and I'm sure you would have really derived value from this short and crisp webinar. If you wish to continue this learning journey, I have an amazing opportunity for you. I have published several courses on banking and financial analysis area, each course costing 2000 rupees. But for you, I'm going to give you a special offer. Here we go. Banking credit courses bundle. This includes course number one, banking credit analysis process. It's a comprehensive course with 200 plus lectures. It covers financial analysis, working capital, term loan, LCBG. It's a comprehensive ever course. Then we have course number two. That is how to carry out financial analysis as a banker. This is going to focus exclusively on financial ratio analysis, cash flow analysis and fund flow analysis. Then comes course number three, how to carry out term loan appraisal and analysis as a banker. It's a comprehensive course focusing on the technical aspects around project finance and term loan. These are all the topics. Then comes course number four, how to prepare CMA report for bank loan through eight sections. This course will take you through entire CMA report preparation process for bank loans. Then we have course number five, how to read balance sheet. So if you are a non-finance person, this course will give you complete insight into balance sheet, how to read them, how to interpret them, how to analyze them. Okay. Then we have course number six, how to read Sybil report. By taking this course, you will get a complete picture of Sybil report reading process. Then we have course number seven, how to prepare cash budget for bank loans. This course will help you to understand the concept of cash budget, which is widely used in short term lending like auto credit facilities, letter of credit and all. So far, I have introduced seven courses of 1,999 each. It means seven courses of value 13,993, but you are going to get it only for 2,599 and it is not yet over. I'm going to give you some more bonus. Course number eight, collateral security is a comprehensive study. Course nine, how to carry out credit risk rating for non-trading entities. Course number 10, in this course, you will learn banking credit analysis through various case studies. So now it is 10 courses of value close to 20,000, but you are going to pay only 2,599. It is not yet over some more bonus. Course number 11, how to read audit report course 12. This focuses on letter of credit and course 13 focuses on financial analysis in very short duration. So you have 13 courses of value close to 26,000 rupees, but you are going to get it for just 2,599. So it is basically seven main courses and you are going to get another six complementary courses, six courses as bonus. So overall, it is 13 courses of value close to 26,000 rupees. It's 1,500 plus lectures. You get lifetime access for all these pre-recorded courses. You can access them in desktop, laptop, mobile, iPhone, iPad, and the overall cost is around 26,000, but you are going to get it only for 2,599. So this is a once in a time opportunity for you. Enroll now. I'll see you inside the course.